August 13th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 25 through 28 of the Old Testament. Then Bildad the Shuhite answered, Dominion and awesome might belong to God. He establishes peace in his heights. Can his armies be numbered? On whom does his light not rise? How then can a human being be righteous before God? How can one born of a woman be pure? If even the moon is not bright and the stars are not pure as far as he is concerned, how much less a mortal man who is but a maggot, a son of man who is only a worm? Then Job replied, How you have helped the powerless, how you have saved the person who has no strength, how you have advised the one without wisdom and abundantly revealed your insight. To whom did you utter these words, and whose spirit has come forth from your mouth? The dead tremble, those beneath the waters and all that live in them. The underworld is naked before God, the place of destruction lies uncovered. He spreads out the northern skies over empty space, he suspends the earth on nothing. He locks the waters in his clouds, and the clouds do not burst with the weight of them. He conceals the face of the full moon, shrouding it with his clouds. He marks out the horizon on the surface of the waters as a boundary between light and darkness. The pillars of the heavens tremble and are amazed at his rebuke. By his power he stills the sea. By his wisdom he cut Rahab the great sea monster to pieces. By his breath the skies become fair. His hand pierced the fleeing serpent. Indeed, these are but the outer fringes of his ways. How faint is the whisper we hear of him. But who can understand the thunder of his power? And Job took up his discourse again. As surely as God lives, who has denied me justice, the Almighty, who has made my life bitter. For while my spirit is still in me, and the breath from God is in my nostrils, my lips will not speak wickedness, and my tongue will not whisper, no deceit. I will never declare that you three are in the right. Until I die, I will not set aside my integrity. I will maintain my righteousness and never let it go. My conscience will not reproach me for as long as I live. May my enemy be like the wicked, my adversary like the unrighteous. For what hope does the godless have when he is cut off, when God takes away his life? Does God listen to his cry when distress overtakes him? Will he find delight in the Almighty? Will he call out to God at all times? I will teach you about the power of God. What is on the Almighty's mind I will not conceal. If you yourselves have all seen this, why in the world do you continue this meaningless talk? This is the portion of the wicked man allotted by God. The inheritance that evildoers receive from the Almighty. If his children increase, it is for the sword. His offspring never have enough to eat. Those who survive him are buried by the plague, and their widows do not mourn for them. If he piles up silver like dust and stores up clothing like mounds of clay, what he stores up a righteous man will wear, and an innocent man will inherit his silver. The house he builds is as fragile as a mosque cocoon, like a hut that a watchman has made. He goes to bed wealthy, but will do so no more. When he opens his eyes, it is all gone. Terrors overwhelm him like a flood. At night a whirlwind carries him off. The east wind carries him away and he is gone. It sweeps him out of his place. It hurls itself against him without pity as he flees headlong from its power. It claps its hands at him in derision and hisses him away from his place. Surely there is a mine for silver and a place where gold is refined. Iron is taken from the ground and rock is poured out as copper. Man puts an end to the darkness. He searches the farthest recesses for the ore in the deepest darkness. Far from where people live, he sinks a shaft in places travelers have long forgotten. Far from other people, he dangles and sways. The earth from which food comes is overturned below as though by fire. A place whose stones are sapphires and which contain dust of gold. A hidden path no bird of prey knows. No falcon's eye has spotted it. Proud beasts have not set foot on it, and no lion has passed along it. On the flinty rock man has set to work with his hand. He has overturned mountains at their bases. 
He has cut out channels through the rocks. His eyes have spotted every precious thing. He has searched the sources of the rivers and what was hidden he has brought into the light. But wisdom, where can it be found? Where is the place of understanding? Mankind does not know its place. It cannot be found in the land of the living. The deep says, it is not with me. And the sea says, it is not with me. Fine gold cannot be given in exchange for it, nor can its price be weighed out in silver. It cannot be measured out for purchase with the gold of Ophir, with precious onyx or sapphires. Neither gold nor crystal can be compared with it, nor can a vase of gold match its worth. Of coral and jasper no mention will be made. The price of wisdom is more than pearls. The topaz of Cush cannot be compared with it. It cannot be purchased with pure gold. But wisdom, where does it come from? Where is the place of understanding? For it has been hidden from the eyes of every living creature, and from the birds of the sky it has been concealed. Destruction and death say, with our ears we have heard a rumor about where it can be found. God understands the way to it, and he alone knows its place. For he looks to the ends of the earth and observes everything under the heavens. When he made the force of the wind and measured the waters with a gauge, when he imposed a limit for the rain and a path for the thunderstorm, then he looked at wisdom and assessed its value. He established it and examined it closely. And he said to mankind, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. God, how I wish I understood this last part that Job talked about. And he said to mankind, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to turn away from evil is understanding. It took me such a long time in my life to get to the point where I understood what that actually meant. And now that I have an opportunity with a new heart from you, I just can't get enough of you. I wish that I didn't have to sleep so I could read more about you. I wish I didn't have to have a real job so that I could study the Bible. Uh, I'm honored and blessed that I get to do daily video Bible as a ministry because I get to be in your word multiple hours during the day. It's just amazing. And the more I learn, two things happen. The more I learn, the less I realize I know. <laughs> and the more I learn, the more I fall in love with you. And I think possibly there's a third one as well, that the more I learn, the more my life reflects and glorifies you, which I know is the reason that I'm here. So what Job is saying is the basis for a Christian heart to fear the Lord and all that that encompasses, that creates the wisdom and to turn away from all evil. That is the understanding. And in Ephesians, it even talks about this. Look carefully, oh sorry, chapter five, verses 15 through 17. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So this crucial piece that Job is talking about, is carried over in multiple places in the in the Bible. We see it in Psalms, we see it, in, we see it in Proverbs, we see it in Ephesians, and there's quite a few other places that it makes the connection between fearing you and what you've called us to do, that that's our wisdom, and turning away from evil and doing what is right is our understanding. Probably my favorite is in Proverbs where it talks about it. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it cost all you have, get understanding. Though it cost all you have to turn away from evil, though it'll cost you everything you have to turn away from evil. But the amazing thing is, is if you give up everything, if you give up all of the evil ways and the choices of sin in your life, I know personally, God, that I get so much more out of this world. Uh, of course, I'm, 
I'm overwhelmed by the fact that you forgive my sins. I have eternal life. That ultimately is, is the biggest thing that you have given me. The fact that I get to glorify you for the rest of my life. But the fact that during my existence here on earth, that if I give up all of these worldly things, you will give me more. But I have to be willing to give them up first. I have to be willing to go through that wisdom and understanding. Not the way that Job talks about that we seek it as human beings. We seek to understand everything. We think intelligence is all the things of the world. We pursue worldly things, whether it be in recreation through movies and TV or through our studies at school for various things like what Job's talking about, figuring out how the world works. Or maybe we, we seek that kind of wisdom understanding, maybe even in our worldly relationships. We seek ac acceptance. We seek to look attractive to the opposite sex. All these worldly things that we've pursued and you're like, no. <laughs> Don't you understand? I am wisdom. I am understanding. If you understand to fear me and my sovereignty, that is the only wisdom that you need because everything else in your life flows out from that. And then if you turn away from evil because of that knowledge, <laughs> then that's the only understanding that you need. You don't need all of this worldly information. And yes, it will cost you everything you currently have. It will cost you material things. It will cost you relationships. It will cost you ways you think. But in return, I will give you so much more. And you have God. That first verse that I read from Ephesians where it talks about um, making the best use of your time because the days are evil. I know that we miss that at least I did for most of my life where I lived in the world for the world because of the world and I it, it was amazing because a lot of people ask me about my testimony or I gladly share my testimony and that whole time where you were taking things away from me and asking me to give up everything to get to that understanding of this new heart amazingly I can when I was going through that and looking back on it, I can very honestly say none of that bothered me. Getting, getting material things taken away from me, getting relationships taken away, somehow they were automatically replaced by this incredible peace and this incredible joy. Mm -hmm. Maybe if anything, I was a little bit baffled by it. I didn't have the understanding. Um, but as you helped me turn away from those things uh, and gave me this new heart, there was never a regret or a frustration in that. Now, interestingly enough, um, and this is something that I will probably struggle with for the rest of my life, if, if I understand what the Bible is telling me, I now struggle with Satan tempting me with those same things. So the things that I so easily gave up, or you helped me so easily give up would be a smart choice of words, are those same things that, this, that Satan keeps bringing up in my life to tempt me with to distract me from doing your work, that I lose that wisdom and that understanding enough to take that one step back into the world. And now suddenly I'm off track of what it is that you want me to do. And it, be, and it becomes like that verse in Ephesians because the days are evil. I'm not making the best use of my time because suddenly I'm in the world. Suddenly I'm thinking of worldly things. Um, again, whether that's TV and movies or jobs and titles or emotions uh, such as jealousy and fear and worry. Maybe it has to do with relationships. Whatever it is, it becomes worldly and I get off track. God, in those times, help bring us back to understanding that you're sovereign. We don't quite get what sovereign means. We can say it. We can say you made everything, you're in charge of everything. But there's still so much we want to hold on to. Um, I just heard somebody say the other day that um, so-and-so saved somebody. Well, we don't save. That's where we're missing that sovereignty part again. You save. It is your choice 
who gets saved. John 15, 16. I chose you, you didn't choose me. So you choose us, we don't choose you. And it, I know that that gets into all of the free will, predestination, elects type of stuff that people argue about from a wisdom standpoint till the end of the universe, but until your son comes back. But see, we don't need to understand what the word sovereign really means. It goes back to faith and trust. All we have to do is have faith and trust that you want what is best for us. That you, in asking us to give up all these worldly things, will give us better things. That faith and that trust and that acknowledgement that when I see myself slipping back into the worldly things and losing that wisdom and losing that understanding, that I go right back to you and say, God, I need your strength. I'm not strong enough to stay uh, to stay a hundred percent focused on your wisdom and your understanding and in that faith and trust moment there are times when I, I slip I choose sin over you and I'm I'm incredibly repentant about that yet I continue to choose certain sins over following you and in those times I need to come back to, I am not strong enough, God. Only you are strong enough to help me overcome those days that are evil. God, I am truly willing to give up everything for you. Your son gave up everything for me. How could I not give up this life and the worldly things to reflect your sovereignty to other people? How could I not do that? So I'm more than willing to do that. And I... Just beg forgiveness for all the things I'm going to choose wrong today. It's not my desire to do that. But I know I'll make mistakes today. Help teach me and guide me so that those cornerstones of my faith become stronger and stronger. That my fear of you, God, becomes bigger and bigger. That my faith and trust in you overcomes all other temptations in my life. To go back to that life that I did give up. And you allowed me to be born again. With a new heart. With peace in my heart. With joy in my heart. And with an opportunity to have a life that reflects you and glorifies you. I'm incredibly humbled by that God. And I just ask that you continue to allow me to learn about your word to learn about your will and the path that you have me on. And most importantly, to be able to give up anything worldly to follow that. I'm going to need your strength. I'm going to need the desire you have for me to follow your will. I'm going to need those things to help me walk this path. I thank you, God, for this incredible opportunity. And God, I just pray for everyone who hasn't started their path yet. Who hasn't given up everything to have even more through you. God, I ask that the people that they put into their lives, the Bibles that they have opportunity to read, the words that are put on social media, that whatever it is that you're speaking to them, that their eyes and their hearts would just be open up to you. So that they can start this amazing relationship with you. Starting from a point of nothing. Meaning that they've given up everything worldly and they're willing to learn what true wisdom is and what true understanding is. They're willing to learn what fear and respect of a sovereign God is. And most amazingly, through this sovereign God that's bigger than anything that we can even imagine, that they can also experience the intimacy of a relationship where you walk with them right by their side every single day. God, I just pray that you come up alongside them, you hold their right hand, and you help guide their steps. Thank you, God, for showing us what true wisdom and true understanding really is. In your son's name we pray. Amen.